In this lecture, we learn how to fix uneven recording through the compressor effect. It is one of the most important effects of Audacity. Even if your recording does not fall into the uneven category, you can still use the compressor to get some benefits. So what do we mean by uneven recording? Well, uneven recording means the volume level is not consistent enough across the recording. This difference in the volume level can be seen in the waveform. For example, the waveform on the screen has a clear difference. But this is an extreme example. Sometimes your waveform may not look like this extreme. Still, you may hear a noticeable difference in the volume level. For example, look at this waveform. It seems pretty uniform, but it has an uneven volume issue. It is a recording for a podcast. I will normalize this to minus 3 dB. If you followed the previous lectures, you already know minus 3 dB is a standard value. The waveform increased in height, meaning the volume level increased more than the raw recording. Let's listen to the recording for a couple of seconds. Oh my gosh, I could give you so many of my examples, but let's take a couple that maybe more people can relate to. So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be Whole30? Should it be keto? Mm, maybe I don't know enough about them and they go back and forth and they just never decide. That's procrastinating. In a couple of places, the volume is relatively low and difficult to understand clearly. Another place with a similar problem is here. Or deciding which workout to start with, you know, like, oh, should I do this or should I do that? Just start, right? So how do we increase the volume of these places? You know, like, oh, should I do this? Or sh Besides those places, the overall volume level is also not that high, although I normalize it to minus 3 dB. If we can take care of the low volume parts, the overall volume will be fixed. I will make a duplicate of this track, select everything inside the track by double clicking and go to edit. Click on duplicate to make a duplicate track. Track duplicating is a good way to compare the audio. I will fix the volume level issue on the bottom track. So later when I compare, I can understand how my fix is working compared to what it is now. If you have multiple tracks, you can activate one track and mute others from the solo button. I will keep the bottom track active as I will be fixing the issue in this track. I will play a part where the volume is low or problematic. While I play the part, I will keep an eye on the meter to see the maximum peak of that part. I, you know, I can't decide should it be whole. I, you know, I can't decide should it be whole. It seems it is getting closer to minus 13. This reading of the meter is important to the compressor effect. Latest Audacity also has another way to measure it. Let's see that briefly. Right click on this region of vertical scale and select linear dB. You can also read the peak values from here when you switch to this scale. You can drag the track to increase the height and see the readings in detail. I can drag it to make it as big as I want. Now I get an idea of where the peak is touching. I was interested in this region of the waveform. So it looks like somewhere near minus 13. I do not need to measure this perfectly, just need to get enough idea. Different audio levels have different readings and it is important to read this peak. Otherwise, the fix will not be that effective. The compressor will be configured wrong. I am done with reading this value and I will make the track height a bit smaller. Otherwise, I am having difficulty seeing both the tracks on the screen. Go to the view, track size and fit to height. I can now see both tracks. I will select the second track and go to the compressor effect. I will go back to the default factory preset so you get an idea of what I am changing. So far, I have given you a particular configuration for effects. For example, for noise reduction, I said you should apply a value of 6 on all 3 sliders. For normalization, I asked you to apply a minus 3 dB peak. But for the compressor, I cannot give you such a specific value. It depends on the recording you are working on. I will give you some guidelines and you will be able to configure out the best settings for you. This visual will help you understand what compressor is. Let's assume it is the peak level of the quiet sounds and this is the peak level of the loud sounds. The gap between these two is called the dynamic range. The job of the compressor is to reduce the dynamic range or reduce the gap. If somehow we can reduce the height of the loud sounds, the gap will decrease. For the purpose of this illustration, I have reduced the height of the loud bar. Compressor does a similar job. It decreases the loudness by compression. There are other audio effects that can also decrease the loudness, but the special thing about the compressor is no audio data is lost. So no clipping or distortion happens if done correctly. At the top of the compressor settings, you can see a graph. 
This graph can give us an idea of how compressor works. The line has a different slope from this point. This is the threshold point. Before the threshold point, the line moved forward in a steeper slope. After the threshold point, the slope declined. Theoretically, if any audio crosses the threshold, the compressor compresses its loudness. So the dynamic range is reduced and the audio will be leveled. In other words, the loud and quiet sounds can be heard comfortably. If I change the threshold slider, you will see that point in the graph is changing its position. You can think of compressor as a scanner. It scans the audio from the start and turns on compressing if the audio level crosses the threshold. You can see the attack time is 0.20 seconds. After the audio passes the threshold, the compressor kicks in at 0.20 seconds. If the audio level comes below the threshold level, the compressor will not immediately stop. It will be released after the release time. The default attack and release time works fine for most of the cases. We will not change it, but the threshold is important. When I played the audio for the low volume parts, the peak was around minus 13. The threshold value will be something close to that value. If I set the threshold to minus 13, it will be less compressed. If I set the value to much lower, like minus 21, it will be more compressed. If I go further down, it will be compressed more. But be careful with that much compression. Too much compression makes the audio sound unnatural. I'll set the threshold value to minus 18. The peak of the softer part I checked was minus 13. And I have chosen a value of 5 dB less than that. I could have chosen something like minus 15 or minus 16. And that would work too. Generally, a value of 4 or 5 dB less than the peak works best for the compressor. If I see too much compression is happening, I can undo the compressor effect. Choose another value for the threshold. So it is about a bit of experiment to find the proper value. Please remember, the threshold will be different for different recordings. After setting the threshold, I will set the noise floor. The noise floor value should be higher than the noise level you have. So if you have a noise level of minus 45 dB, noise floor of minus 40 will be okay. If you have a noise level of minus 40 dB, then you have to set noise floor more than that like minus 35 dB. The noise floor should be not too close to the quieter sound levels. Otherwise, your voice may be mistaken as noise. After compression, the noise level may also increase. Setting the noise floor correctly will prevent the noise from becoming loud after compression. Another important setting is the ratio. The more ratio you set, the more compressed the sound will become. A good ratio is between 3 to 1 to 5 to 1. It is best if you can stay inside 4 to 1. I'll set to 4 to 1. If you want more or less compression, you can choose accordingly. I already have talked about attack time and release time and will use the default values. Makeup gain for 0 dB can be checked or unchecked. If checked, it will normalize the audio to 0 dB after compression. It is always a good idea to normalize manually after compression so that the peak is set correctly. If you use normalize after compression, this checkbox does not matter. But the compress based on the peak matters. The way I configure the compression, this checkbox must be checked. The threshold I set earlier can be either peak based or RMS based. Checking this box means it is peak based. All the readings we have seen in the meter is peak based. So you have to check this box for proper configuration. Checking this box also changes the compression mode to upwards compression. Audacity has two modes of compression, upward and downward. The final audio becomes the same regardless of what type of compression you use. But with upwards compression, it is easier to configure properly. As it is convenient to measure peaks from the meters and the vertical scale, I am opting for compress based on peaks. The compression is done and the waveform has become more uniformly distributed than before. However, it is too loud as Audacity applied a 0 dB gain after compression. To fix it, I will apply normalization. I will normalize to minus 3 dB. If we now listen and compare it with the sound before compression, we will notice the improvement. Please note that both tracks are normalized to minus 3 dB, so the peak amplitude is same for the both tracks. Oh my gosh, I could give you so many of my examples, but let's take a couple that maybe more people can relate to. So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be Whole30? Should it be keto? Mm, maybe I don't know enough about them and they go back and forth and they just never decide. That's procrastinating. Or deciding which workout to start with, you know, like, oh, should I do this or should I do that? Just start, right? Or trying.
So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be whole? So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be whole 30? But I, you know, I can't decide, should it be whole? But I, you know, I can't decide, should it be whole 30? You see, the compressed sound has become much better for the listening experience. You should spend some time to figure out the best compressor settings for your audio. So what is the key takeaway of this video? You should find a relatively quiet part in the audio, not necessarily that this part has to be the quietest part of the recording. A relatively quiet part will do. Play it and notice the peak. Set your threshold below that peak. The lower you go, the more compression will happen, but be careful of over compression. Must check the compress based on the peak checkbox. Compressor is one of the hardest effects to configure, but it is the best effect to make the sound better. If you have any difficulty understanding the compressor effect, please send me a message.